Today we're going to be playing some Hyper Thin Reents. It was a request, and Hyper Thin's always been a deck I like. But the big reason we're finally going to try it out, once again, is because Mage Assassin got buffed to four provisions, which really helps this deck. It helps stuff like Renfrey too, but I don't really want to play that. So we're going to do this for now, and try and see how much those provisions help us out. So as far as the deck in general, Reents Hyper Thin, it's pretty simple. Uh, well, it's <laughs> in theory it's simple. Executing it can be difficult. But um, we're playing Tactical Decision, also getting a provision buff, so let's really try out some buffs, see if this deck's still viable. I am skeptical, but we'll see. We are playing Cursed Scroll. Uh, the deck really benefits from having more consistency. Then we have Reance, our big boy. Now, I have in the past made Reance decks where the point was to e Quax Reance out of the deck immediately. Uh, this time we're actually just going to do Reance Rico, uh, because you just mix it up, and e Quax is a little worse than it used to be. And we're playing a Heat Wave. Oh, we should probably fix the bug here for a second. Sorry about that. So we have Reance, then we have the Heat Wave. Uh, just another control, just a control tool. We don't have too much of that. We've got like three control cards basically, so having it in here is really nice. Then we have the Royal Decree. Now you can see that how this could be very easily become a Golden Necker deck, right? Because the Golden Golden Necker Hyper Thin is what I used to play. But um, since we're playing Reance, we can't do that this time. We're going to be playing... Just Reance and Heatwave as our above nine version cards, but you can definitely make this without Reance into a Hyper Thin with Golden Necker. Uh, the Golden Necker version is really nice because the Golden Necker thins three cards for you, which is amazing and super helpful. You just gotta be careful about where your units are in your deck, but stuff like Maxi can take care of that. So then we have the Decree, just it finds a unit, plays a unit. We like having that consistency and it thins a card. Uh, oh, Nyromancy isn't actually great here, unfortunately, because if you get the Echo from round two to three, I guess it doesn't matter. It, it works fine. Uh, it, was, it works fine. Just decrease cheaper. Uh, the only issue with Oniromancy being the Echo is it doesn't thin a card the first time you play it. It thins a card, and then at the end of the round goes back in your deck. So you have to play it twice for a thing to go off. If you don't play it once, it still thins your deck by one because the Echo's not back in yet, so it's not really an issue. But um, we're going with decreeing this. Because it is cheaper, and we have some extra provisions we gain from the Mage Assassin. Tactical Decision we can use for something else instead of the Onarmancy. But you could play it. I think the degree is a little bit better here. You don't really need the Echo because your deck is so consistent with, so consistent with all the thinning. We have the Vilga Force. We have the, well, we have the Hyper Thin cards with Arthesius, Trist, Yennefer. Now, we are playing Roach here. Um, you could play a couple different Hyper Thin cards, thinning options here. I'm going to go with the Roach Nickers for the round one tempo. This deck really does not want to lose round one, so just having these come out can help out quite a bit. Then we have the Snowdrop. Uh, we also have the Vilga Forts we mentioned. It gives you control and you can pull out your Albrick if you need to. We are playing an Albrick version. Then we have the Snowdrop. Um, you don't have to play Snowdrop, but Snowdrop Decision gets you out of a lot of problematic situations where you lose tempo. Then we have the Tempest with the two Fogs. You could alternatively play... Oh, we're just doing this for this one. I have tried previously uh, Dead Man's Tongue and any two fours. So those are pretty interchangeable. Tempest and the two fogs or Dead Man's Tongue and two fours. Uh, the two fours is more... It's more... Um, what's it called? Uh, it's more flexible because you put in like two tech cards like a spores and a squirrel and then banish those with Dead Man's Tongue if you don't need them. Uh, we're going with Tempest and Fog this time just because it gives you more value uh, immediately. Like, it gives you more value. It's not immediate because the Tongue gives you plus 8 if you're banishing 4s. Whereas the Fog's only 4 the first turn, but it does give you more over time. And so you don't have too much control. Just having this can help you get stuff. But Dead Man's Tongue is a very, very viable alternative. And I was trying it previously. Now we're just trying out Tempest. I'm going to try them both out and compare them. Then we have a Kazabo Malaspina. Now this is just kind of for fun. If we're going to be honest here. Um, in this slot, you can play whatever you want. The uh, Commander's Horn's a pretty reasonable option if you need round one tempo, because you do put out a lot of units round one, then Horn can buff everything up. Like, it's actually a really good option round one for Horn, because you pull out Roach, you pull out Knickers, the Blightmakers spawn stuff. Like, you get a row filled up pretty reasonably fast for this to work. You kind of play anything here. You also cut Provision on um, this Alba Armor Cavalry, and then you gain a provision, you could play an 8 here. So you could do like a Swears. I tried out Swears, but there's not too much damage to combo with it. 
So you play a 7 or an 8 here. It kind of is up to you what you want to do. For this one, we're just playing Cosmo because it's fun. And you can Cosmo on the Knickers, the Roach, the Triss, the Yennefer. And you can do it on the um, Mage Assassins as well. Like, there's a lot of Cosmo targets. I thought it'd just be kind of fun to play some Cosmo. Uh, hopefully we can get him on the Triss Yennefer round 3s. And that would be pretty nice. He's also kind of in here as a tech because this deck is extremely weak to Nilfgaard. Like, just pretty much all of Nilfgaard decks mess with you because of Vilgefortz. Um, Vilgefortz is a reason why play the um, I was originally playing Dead Man's Tongue because you can flex it into banishing one card instead of two, even if that one card has to be a gold. But if you have Vilgefortz, that's a nice option to have. So that's one of the reasons I was playing it before. But uh, yeah, just Nilfgaard's a huge problem. And Cosmo on their false series and stuff can like give you a chance. <laughs> it doesn't help too much. Mostly this is for fun. Nilfgaard's a huge problem for the matchup. Then we have our Albrick. You move him to the top and boost him a bunch. If you're playing Mill, you just leave. And we have Rico. Rico goes with Rience. Leave him your deck to the end of the game. Ideally, you curse scroll him to the bottom. You can also play a Maxi and put him on the bottom that way. It says armor, this Alba Armored Cavalry. Then we have our Blightmakers, the one cavalry. It's in here for a lot. You could kind of flex this however you want. Then we have the Fogs. Again, you could go with the Dead Man's Tongue and play any two fours instead. Uh, I was doing that, like I said. We're going to compare how I feel about that after. We have the Couriers, two Novices, and two Mage Assassins. Pretty standard stuff. So that's the deck. Hyper Thin. We thin down to two cards. We play Reunce. One of those cards is Rico. Discard the Rico to kill whatever you want. And then you got one card in your deck. You go Triss, Yennefer's Arthesius, Rion sets something to one power. And if you want to save Vilgefortz to kill your own guy and pull out your Albrick, you can. That's basically the idea. Uh, I don't think it will hold up super well in the current game. This is an older deck. But I know that you can make Renfrey versions. I just didn't want to. So uh, we'll see how this goes. It's Renfrey versions without uh, with Rion. So you can make versions with Golden Necker. But you know what? Let's try this one out and see how it works. Manielko or something. Blaze of Glory, so it could be Warriors. Or it could be Pro Spam Beasts with Renfri. Both of those are fairly likely. We can proc our Albrecht quite a few times here. So it's going to be the Renfrey Beasts. If he got... Oh. No door is closed. You have to lock that. The, I was going to say, if you got Kingslayer or this, it really hurts our deck. This has to be locked or removed. Alba! If he purifies that, we have to leave a special in our deck. Oh, it's not Renfrey. So it's gonna be Shoop. It's just a Shoop deck. Okay, can live with that. Defeat them with hunger, crush them with thirst. If he has a purify, he's gonna purify the um the infiltrator because it's just such a huge problem. You just have to leave one special in deck. I mean, I imagine this would be Shoop. It could also be Lippy. The Lippy Shoop deck, we played something like this before. It would make a lot of sense. If that is the case, heat waving one of the constructs is good, so we can't get it back again. But we'll see. This deck's also pretty draw dependent, the one he's playing. Awesome. But um, that doesn't seem to be an issue for him. Not sure why we're doing that, to be honest. Also, if it's a Lippy Duck, I'm surprised there's no Knickers and Roach. Okay, there's the hand fixing. This is very similar to deck we played before. It's a very fun deck. I think we have to do this, unfortunately. You don't want to get any back, and if it keeps triggering it, we will lose. 
Oh, that's a problem. Uh, we have to play a Mage Assassin out of hand now, I think. Yes. I have to play one out of the hand. The problem is I can play this twice. Anything that... There's so many cards. This is a problem with Hyper. There's so many cards that just... Really ruin your strategy at this point. And you just hope you can't see any of them. And even if you don't see any of them, you have like a chance. You can go for the transform. You might. Nope, just resilience. That's a play of fog. Your cheapest card, right? Not unit. Yes. So we'll play a fog, I think, then. Truly electrifying. So we fixed our deck from the mess up of the Mada now. We could, theoretically, just go for it next round. Oh, whatever. I don't want to deal with him playing Mada again. We'll just do the round two. Sure, he has a shoop, but he doesn't have the... If we go to round three, he's going to lippy, then get all his cards back anyway. So as far as the units in our deck... I really want the Decree and Snowdrop. You can work with this. If we put the Albrick back in... Think about just keeping it. And just RNGing with Triss and the others. I like it. We're gonna play Snowdrop with this anyway. So based on what we draw, we can decide. Like if we draw, uh, if we draw like the Blightmaker, then maybe it'd be worth doing it. It's also just might be worth re-ensing right now, but I don't know what the top three are. You know what? Let's just do it. Eh. Not too surprising. I was hopeful. We had like a 50-50 there. Like a 40-60, something like that. Hey, listen here. Listen well. Let's see. So we could set something to a 6. It's not amazing. Let's do the snowdrop. Draw Tempest and Fog. We could put this and this back. Eh, whatever. Let's do it. Hey, you went to the top. You love to see it. That's interesting. Unfortunately, we don't have our special. Our deck will not get smaller, but we do have the Reense Order. Is he going to get bigger than that? I don't know, but there's no reason really to wait. I mean, he probably has a Heat Wave, but he doesn't want to use it on Reense. Grab the Triss here. Five on Kazuma. Well, I guess we could kill this. Probably worth it. We probably should use his order, his order at this point. Hey, we hit the big guy. Uh, that probably doesn't help because he's going to have the one heat wave. Set it minus six. At five, I'm pretty nervous he's gonna die. We do have an amazing Vilgaforts though, because he's got nothing in deck. 
All right, Arthesius, give me that RNG. That's what I'm talking about. Skill-based gameplay. Okay, compass. Uh, it's gonna be hard tear no matter what. If there he is, I think he's gonna have a heat wave. Probably. I can't imagine just be anything else other than heat wave. How many constructs has he played? One, two. He banished one. Oh, it's gonna be the damage construct then. Uh, that might actually give us a chance here. <laughs> we probably don't want to do the RNG on the ranged order. Well, actually, let's figure out the math. If it's damage construct, he's played what? The one we banished, two, three, and no living armor. So he's played three constructs. So it'll do eight and play for 13. That gets him to effectively 37. So this does not win. Vilgaforcing a unit of his does not win. Right, because we got a 36, it's worth 10, 37. Oh, it does win. Okay, this does work. We don't need to do an RNG here. This should win, because it should be the 8 damage guy. Yeah, it is. Nice. It wasn't, yeah, because he has the constructs. Nice. We do actually take a win there. Um, Pretty much just because of RNG, but you know what? Sometimes you got to take it. No Fear 323. Three. I'm pretty sure we've played this guy before. Playing, uh, what's that called? Onslaught. So this is probably Onslaught Pirates. Looks pretty standard for it. This, is, this should be a pretty reasonable match. We don't have a Blightmaker, but we can decree it. We have so many cards we don't want to draw that are currently in our deck that we want to thin that I want to keep this hand. This Tempest into the Fogs pulls out Roach as well, and that really helps thin our deck for later stuff. Uh, do we want to Vilgaforts that? I think we actually just do. I want to stop the armor gain, although realistically he's going to get the armor anyway. Two pirates. I like this card, but I've never really tried it out. So this is gonna be the magic compass one. I'll got you like fishes. He's thinning just like we are, quite a bit. Mm, now we can't stop the armor. Well, that is unfortunate. We could, in theory, grab our snowdrop. I think we do have to grab the snowdrop. Because if he's playing Raiding Fleet, we have to do this early. So these two are good to keep you back you back for now Not all battles need end in bloodshed. no second mage assassin is annoying these are good here put you back too actually let's just Staff. play all the setup cards this round with the snowdrop. Can't say that's a surprise. Let's do the novice. Now, how did that incantation go? We have a really nice Cosimo. Just waiting just waiting on it because we're playing setup stuff. Uh, I think we're going to do Blightmaker because it's bigger. Let's grab this. Do the big tempo one now. We're 
We're gonna play the Cosimo this turn, I think. Actually, we don't have to. We can do this first. Of course, as you wish, Master. He's not gonna pass since we're pressuring on even. So we should keep doing the setup cards. Give us all you got. Now I think we do need the tempo. All right, Cosimo, give us something good. Mutation of the eyes. That is the greatest You know what? That's pretty good. I'll take it. We have a random Donmir of Troy. We actually got a Phoenix. So we got carryover. Uh, that's pretty funny. That's not very good here. Just round one still. Not on any maps. Can't really keep up on keep up on tempo much longer. It's fine if we play all of our cards. You might pass here. We force to use our heat wave, but this is what it is. The round control is important enough that this is worth it, and we can get away with banishing Bjorn, which I think. Or we can get away with banishing you. Yeah. So we want to minimize the Fakusha value potential. I just want that short round three. We've got everything we want set up. The question is, is it enough to beat him? In round three. Do you want to do this? Because we have it. And then just hope this hits the Albrecht. Yes. It's highly likely. Okay. So much for highly likely. It was 60%. Is he going to use a leader charge here? I think he should. He should. So he's gonna have the small blood, potentially. His compass isn't set up yet, but he's gonna get it set up. Although to be fair, he might have a boardages. Those aren't great at the moment for him. And that is our setup complete. Let's see what he's got. Like, if he has a Bordages, that might not work out well for him. We lock. Do we lock? I think we lock. We lock. This does gain armor while it's on the battlefield. It gains armor when you play pirates. You sort of need to do Rients next. Is it worth killing the Terror of the Seas at this point? He's gonna have a second one of these, right? The Smuggler doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it's worth getting rid of that one. Just because he's going to have the other one. Do the transform. There's the abortage. So, obviously he's going to get that set up. Ooh, we didn't kill it. That's pretty nice. 
the plus 14. I think we'll hold the Riant's order. So he has the compass. The question is, what does he want to compass? Svalblood's a good choice, pretty much always. He's got the Fakusha. He has combi, but I don't think the combi's enough. It's going to be Heart of Terror. Let's just, uh, <laughs> we can stop pretending, but it's going to be Heart of Terror. I'm trying to debate if it matters which one of these we play first. I guess it's Heart of Terror. He's going to hit this or the Phoenix, but maybe this way we can hit something big. I might have gone for the infuse on the reans and then the decent chance it dies. Set so something's power to one. Heart of Terror is not enough. Compass isn't going to get him there, even if it's fall blood. Take it. Very nice. So Lumi 1992 playing. Uh, here we go. A Nilfgaard. Um, so Nilfgaard is just a huge problem. We have to consider the Vilga Forts. We could draw a card and put this back on top with Novice. I think I like that. Actually, we'll put him back. So we're really looking for the um, Mage Assassins. I mean, there's just so many ways he can win this. He has a way to make a Kingslayer or is playing a Kingslayer. The Vigil Forts. We can play around the Vilga Forts a little bit, but it's a pain. It's a huge pain, actually. Now, how did that organization go? Let's play the Tempest. Now that he's got both rows going. Since we don't have the Mage Assassins, we're gonna we're gonna want to play one from hand anyway. We just do this. Amnesty time. Joust is pretty good here. I live to serve you. Got our Cosmo set up if he wants to tempo, but I think he'll just pass. We have a fairly strong advantage at the moment. My duty? He wants to keep playing. That is interesting. Didn't expect that. Playing double cross. I mean, normally I just expect this to be Henry Shoop. Which is probably still what it is. Let's do this. Go with one of the blight makers. Just because it plays for a little more tempo than everything else. You're not completely incompetent. 
Not sure what that emote was about. Now we do have to keep a Mage Assassin. We need to keep one of our thins as a potential thinning instead of actually playing it. Which could mean a Mage Assassin. I mean, let's be real. There's no way, there's no way he doesn't have Volga Forts. Problem, well, the other thing is we could also just make sure we have no bronze units left in our deck. But that's looking dubious at the moment. I hope we can do that. Might be worth pointing this back then. We just want to get the bronzes out. Let's trigger this. So we only have the two bronzes left. We see five cards for the next combo. So we have a chance to out the Vilgaforts from ruining our setup. But then the Vilgaforts is just a destroy. It's probably worth it though. Defeat them with hunger. Crush them with thirst. I think it is worth it. This is our connection that's lost. What is going on with that? Alright. Okay, we just turned off Steam and that seems to have fixed it. So that's good at least. We're going to play you. We're just looking for Mage Assassin. Just make sure, and then we just need got them both. That's nice. That is actually perfect. So you go back. You're on top, so you come off. Learned our lesson. Then you go. Do you want to keep both the bronze units? And then of these, which one would I most like to save for round three? Probably Riants. Right, Vilga Forts can't get us anymore because no bronze units in our deck. Dodge that threat at least, because he's probably coming down right now. You might actually just copy our Cosmo. It'd be really good for him. He's at a six and a ten. Hey, there's the Henry. Yeah, there it is. Like I don't know what you do about this. Let's just hope you didn't draw it. There. <laughs> what? Like what do we do? <laughs> there's literally nothing we can do. There's actually just nothing. Well. Whatever. I guess we just have to try and 2-0 him. We just had to hope it wasn't a Henry version. But it turned out to be. Wait a minute here. Advances civilization. He made two Henrys. I mean, okay. What do, what do you do? Actually, we can't use this, though, so that's not the worst card. We're just all in. I don't care anymore. We tried to play it out in a smart way, but... It's just what it is. I will start locking these. Time for the Cosimo. Let's play it. I know he's gonna. He should play it. I think. 
maybe. Yeah, it's probably his best card. Our hand is awful. For him to copy, at least. Alright, let's see it. That's an interesting place to put it. I might have gone for these two. <laughs> he got Doppler and Ermion. Uh, that's funny. That is very funny. We just luck. One of these again. Doesn't matter which one. Not really. This is still really funny to me. This Cosmo he played. There's Rosa. Again. It only does four, but there's nothing we can do about it. Which is extremely annoying. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. You gonna kill Triss or Yen? Because he knows we have the Cosimo. Look for its time? We don't have a bronze unit in our deck, so it's just destroy. Ivor. Honestly, we just don't care. We know he's won the game. It's nothing we can do. Like, it's just one of those things. Like, if he has Henry, it's an automatic loss, because you can't thin those out. We, the only chance we had was an all-in two, round two. I guess we could get something really lucky here. That's interesting. Gimpy Gerwin might do some work here, but it's not going to be enough to win. Because his hand's all golds. Which one did you put in? So that made the Rosa. Makes sense. Honestly, um, he has a lot of... I mean, what are we what are we thinking? We're just playing everything. Let's go, Gimpy Gerwin. Do some damage. I like it. Two damage. Doing better than when I made a deck based around you. How many tens do we have? You're an 11. Or 9. Let's see it. Go, go, go. That wasn't very good. Um, are you a 10? No, 8, 7, 8. So we do 1 damage. This place for 5? Okay, sure. Go Gimpy Garway, hit something. Good work, Gimpy Gerwin. I'm proud of you. And you too, Cosimo, being a buddy this round. Not that I think it matters. Like, we might be able to just tempo him round three if it's not a Shoop deck, but this is probably Shoop here, and there's other cards for Dea. I don't see how we do anything. So he's played both his created cards, so it should be Shoop or Dea in his hand. Well, he's not playing those. I'm never playing Abduction. He might just have Shoop as well. Another thing is we should at least draw the Albrick. So at least we have a big play this round. And actually, we don't want to redraw. Uh, we do not want to redraw at all. Just because we know our the, our deck cards are on top, which means we'll get the Rico. Excuse me, we'll get the Rico from the Rians still. Whereas if we draw the Rico and shuffle it back in, there's no guarantee that the Rians will have it. However, it is worth noting he gave us another Rians that we can't use. It would be really good if we could use that. Did he just discard? Discarded Tourney Joust? It's weird. I mean, I guess we do it. He does have Abduction on Dilgafort, which is probably game winning. But he has last day, so... That's Dilgafort's right there. That should do it. I want to make sure we can't abduction it. Air 
There's the abduction. Does seven to a Nilfgaard. All right. I mean, there's literally nothing we can do. It's just a matchup loss, so. Good job, I guess. An interesting Few vultures dare venture into the Von Morlohem's wood. At least we have some fun with Cosimo, even if it was an unwinnable game. So that's the deck, guys. That's how it performs against stuff nowadays. Uh, actually did a lot better than I thought it would, but that's almost exclusively because we only played one Nilfgaard player, and there's a lot of Nilfgaard players out there. Um, yeah, Nilfgaard in general is kind of just... I don't think I've beaten a Nilfgaard player with this deck since I've played it recently. It's just that they have so many ways to interrupt your deck count that it just gets messed up. And once your deck count's messed up, you really have some problems. Which is one reason why I think the Dead Man's Tongue versus Tempest, like the Dead Man's Tongue isn't as many points as the Tempest, but it can let you flex into Banishing a Gold. The problem with Banishing Gold is you really want to play all of them. So I don't know about that one still. But it does let you tech with the fours. So I think that might be better. So I think probably we would go back to playing Dead Man's Tongue, a Spores, and then another four, potentially Squirrel. Something like that, I think, would be good. Probably Spore Squirrel, which I would have, instead of, I had those before Fog. I tried that earlier. And that Dead Man's Tongue. I think we would do that. Probably. As far as the rest of the deck, it all seems fine. Cosmo is, like I said, Cosmo is just a fun card. You can take him out, do a 7 or an 8 instead. Do two sixes. Excuse me, do two sixes as well. I think it, I like having the Alba Armor Cavalry for the lock. I think it might be worth having another lock as well. Like, you could go Deregere or a second Alba instead of Cosmo, then put in a six. Or you can put in a six or seven and play the one Aristocrat for four with the lock instead of him. Uh, that gives you flexibility. And I kind of think, like, you have space there just for any one of these guys. Um, honestly, if we're being realistic, Treyhairn's probably the best one, much as I don't like him, just because you kind of need help sometimes winning games. Uh, that's one option. I thought about Profit. But you can't really fit some of the other packages in, unfortunately. Like, full Siri and Milton, you can't fit. You can play a Contharella, just want to RNG your opponent. It's the issue. I think the uh, Commander's Horn, though, makes a good argument. The problem is it's only really good around one, and then you can't use it very much, so... This is kind of whatever card you want to pick here, I would think. But overall, deck's alright. It's pretty fun to play still, though. You get some good stuff. Cosmo, in particular, we had some good times with in these games. And I hope you guys enjoyed. It's a fun deck to play, even if it's not that strong at the moment. And maybe we'll try the Renfrey version, which I'm sure is better. And then, obviously, you can do Gold Necker that re as well. That's pretty good, too. A little better than this. I th might be better than this. I'm not too sure about that one. But I know the Renfrey, wor Renfrey version is going to be better than this, I'm pretty sure. Just because it adds so much to the deck. Like, she adds so much, and she can thin if you need her to, an extra or one less. And then you can always go with, uh, the Iron Freeze Gang thin another card too, while being really good tempo, which is something you could use. So I think that might be better. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. It was pretty fun to make this one, and we will see you next time.